These days, washboards may look more like museum pieces than household appliances. But our Connor Knighton takes us to a place where they're still being made, offering some good, clean fun. Welcome to the market now, ladies and gents. Got an hour to kill and some instruments. <laughs> For serious players of the washboard, although good luck finding one who's all that serious. A trip to Logan, Ohio is like a pilgrimage. The annual Washboard Music Festival is a chance to celebrate the small town's most unusual small business. Logan is home to the last washboard manufacturer left in America. I just don't want to part with it, and we'll keep it going as long as we can. We just want to keep it alive for the history. I have all of the old machinery. Jackie Barnett has always had a thing for old machinery and old traditions. She grew up in New Zealand, but moved to Ohio in 1980. She was working as a seamstress when she got a call about a business opportunity that might be right up her alley. A friend in Columbus called us and said, there's this really neat business gonna close down and we think you and your husband should look at it. And we asked him what it was and he said, a washboard company. And I'm like everybody else, I said, washboards? The Columbus Washboard Company was founded in 1895. Keep in mind, washboards were once how everyone from housewives to Buster Keaton did their laundry. At its peak, the company was shipping over a million units a year. They were selling washboards all over the country. There would be trains coming into the back of the factory, picking up large shipments of washboards. Everybody used them. Does the housewife have and then a newfangled machine came along and changed everything. She knows the confining hours around the wash tub are a thing of the past. The electric washing machine made scrubbing clothes on a piece of corrugated metal over a pail of water seem like far too much work. So, one by one, American washboard factories went out of business. Barnett couldn't resist the opportunity to buy the last one left. But after she took over the business in 1999 and moved it to Logan, she started noticing that some of her washboard customers had no interest in washing. We're just going to learn the art. That's how we came down. Do you have any idea what percentage are being purchased for musical use? We believe about 40%. The washboard as a musical instrument is believed to have originated on southern plantations, when slaves would make music with whatever tools were available. By the 1930s, the washboard had found its way into mainstream musical acts, like the Washboard Rhythm Kings. At its core, it's just metal and wood, okay. and this one. typically played with thimbles to avoid hurting your fingers. All right, hold on, this is terrible. All right, harder than it looks. <laughs> it harder is. Harder than it looks, it all right. Is. Good right. job. <laughs> but the washboard as an instrument can also contain a laundry list of accessories. That's from a that's from a washing machine. That's from a ice cream cart. That's from an ice cream. There's an alarm bell. This is just a test. This is decorative, or is this a? Well, that's a rubber chicken. Okay. Oh, it's got a noise there. And back here, that's a duck call. Well, the heart went bump when I saw the pretty girl down at the dump. Washboard Hank, he wouldn't tell us his real name, makes his living as a full-time washboard musician, although he says he does not do it for the money. No, no, I don't have a washboard-shaped swimming pool, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> nope, he does it for the response he gets from the crowds. And what are the reactions you get when people see you playing this? They laugh. And that's what it's about now. And we start playing and people laugh and kicking up their heels and they're carrying on. And I thought, that's a good thing to do. 
clearly, Jackie Barnett agrees. She now makes boards with stainless steel to stand up to more rigorous playing. And do some more rubbing until you get it completely clean. But she still makes washboards for washing, sometimes for soldiers overseas. So we send them everything that they need, including instructions on how to use a washboard, all at no charge to the soldiers. It's all done with donations. We can average 150 each a day. The company also gives popular tours, a chance for visitors to see what life was like before the spin cycle. You know, who knows, one of these days we may have to use them again, and I'll know how. <laughs> <laughs> so you're preparing for the washboard apocalypse? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Should that day ever come, Logan, Ohio will be the town you'll want to head to. Just don't forget to pack your spoons and your thimbles.